Buongiorno. Uh, today, uh, unfortunately, we don't have the lecture room, so I will have to use uh, the iPad to record the lecture. Um, I'm sorry. I hope uh, this, this is a technical problem that I, I hope it will be solved soon. So, um, okay. Uh, today, I want to discuss uh, uh, limit laws uh, for uh, uh, sums of uh, IID random variables, okay? So this is, uh, uh, the idea is uh, essentially that we want uh, to generalize what we have seen uh, for the law of large numbers. So the law of large numbers uh, tells us uh, that uh, if you take a sequence of uh, and uh, IID uh, random variables, uh, and if you take the arithmetic mean, then as n goes to infinity, uh, this converges to a constant, uh, which is the expected value of the uh, random variable x. And uh, however, uh, the law of uh, large numbers uh, uh, does not tell us, uh, say, how big, uh, 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 is the deviation, uh, is the difference uh, between uh, the mean and uh, mu. And uh, also uh, it does not tell us uh, how it is distributed. So what we want to uh, ask, uh, what we want to address is uh, essentially uh, these two questions. In addition, we want also to uh, understand why, uh, uh, why and when the law of large numbers uh, does not hold, okay? So, uh, so let us uh, then phrase this question more precisely. And um, so, so what we want to do is take uh, uh, a sequence uh, of uh, random variables uh, be a sequence of i i d random variables uh, with a distribution, a common distribution P of X. So this is the PDF. PDF is, uh, is P of X. And uh, then uh, we want to consider uh, this, uh, 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 this um, variable, which is uh, uh, the sum And uh, the problem that we want to solve uh, is to uh, find two sequences, AN and uh, BN, of real numbers such that I can write this, this sum as AN plus BN times a new random variable Y and uh, uh, y has uh, a non-degenerate distribution. Okay, uh, so what does uh, non-degenerate means? Uh, it means that uh, essentially, uh, so if I call P star this probability distribution, I don't want uh, P star of Y to be, uh, I don't want Y essentially to be just a constant. So I don't want P, uh, P star to be just a delta function uh, centered in some uh, um, point Y zero, okay? So I want P star to be a, a real, uh, say a reasonable uh, distribution. 
Okay. So, um, okay, so what uh, uh, does this mean? Uh, well, uh, the, uh, you see that uh, uh, this uh, tells us that um, uh, if, uh, so that you can rephrase this, that in such a way that uh, so the, the random variable y of omega, which is sin of o minus a n divided by b n should converge to a, a random variable. So this uh, depends on n also, on a, a random variable as n goes to infinity. And uh, here we will be uh, dealing with convergence in distribution, okay? So, the idea uh, behind uh, this, uh, this, this equation here is that we want to separate uh, the dependence uh, on n from uh, uh, that on uh, omega. You see, so we want to explicitly uh, understand how this, uh, the sum depends on n through these two terms uh, and how the, this, the fluctuations are uh, distributed, okay? Very good, so, so you see now that uh, uh, we can go back uh, to the law of large numbers and uh, understand uh, that uh, uh, the, the law of large numbers, uh, when the law of large numbers holds, uh, then uh, um, you should have two conditions. So first, uh, an divided by n should converge to mu, which is the expected value of x. And uh, uh, bn divided by n should go to zero as n goes to infinity, so that uh, uh, this second term will not, uh, uh, will not matter, okay, will vanish. And uh, okay, but as I told you, we want also to understand uh, why and when the law of large number uh, does not hold. Okay, so uh, the way to address this question is uh, uh, the following, uh, is to uh, resort to um, a tool uh, which is similar, which is the analog of generating function, which is that of a uh, characteristic uh, functions. So uh, the characteristic function of a random variable is uh, defined as uh, the expected value of e to the minus i q times x. And if you write it in full, this is the integral of uh, uh, p of x e to the minus i q x. So this is the just the Fourier transform of the distribution, okay? And uh, on top of this function, it is uh, also useful uh, to define the, uh, the log of this function, which is uh, uh, called the cumulant generating function. Uh, so you see that uh, uh, essentially, uh, so this, uh, um, the, um, uh, this, with this definition here, this is the same definition that we used, uh, uh, but with, uh, for integer random variable, just with the substitution S is equal to E to the minus IQ, okay. And uh, also uh, the cumulant generating function is the same, uh, uh, is the same cumulant generating function with this same distribution, with this same uh, 
um, uh, substitution uh, as we discussed for integer uh, random variables. Okay, so it, it essentially satisfies uh, the same properties and uh, let me just uh, remind them. So first of all, because of uh, normalization, then uh, you have that uh, phi computed in zero must be equal to one and psi computed in zero must be equal to zero, okay? Uh, this is just because uh, when you set uh, uh, Q equal to zero, then this part uh, disappears and this is just an organization. <clears throat> okay, so the, another uh, 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 property is that uh, if you take the absolute value of Psi of Q, Psi is in general a complex uh, uh, function, then uh, this, uh, 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 must be, uh, so this is the integral in uh, uh, dx, p of x, e to the minus i q x. This must be less or equal than the integral dx of p times e to the minus i q x. Uh, but this is equal to one, so, uh, and the integral is equal to one. <coughs> so, um, so the, the absolute value of uh, the generating function must be less or equal to one. And uh, analogously, the real part of the uh, psi of Q must be less or equal to zero. Okay, so uh, next, uh, um, so the second, property of uh, characteristic function is what happens uh, uh, if you <clears throat> uh, if you define if uh, they are analytic in zero then uh, you can define the uh, it's uh, power expansion. So, and uh, power expansion as for the generating function uh, is, uh, uh, is just uh, what you obtain by uh, expanding uh, the exponential here. And the exponential uh, gives uh, us just uh, minus IQ to the power N divided by N factorial. And then uh, you have uh, uh, the expected value of x to the end. And uh, because of this, because the coefficients uh, of the power expansion of the characteristic function are equal to the moment, uh, this is also called uh, the moment generating function. So uh, likewise, uh, uh, the psi of q has an analogous expansion in zero. Uh, but uh, this time the coefficients uh, are called the, are the cumulants. Uh, okay, so Cn is the cumulant of order, of order n. This is exactly the same as what we've discussed for integer random variables. Okay, the next property of uh, um, uh, characteristic function that we will use uh, is what happens uh, 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 when you make uh, an affine transformation. So imagine that you define a, a random variable x tilde, which is uh, a plus b times a random variable x. Uh, and the random variable x uh, as uh, a generating function uh, uh, phi of q. So the generating function uh, of uh, x tilde, let's say psi tilde, is the expected value of e to the minus i q times x tilde. So this is just uh, the expected value 
of e to the minus i q times a uh, minus uh, i q times b times x. Then uh, you see that this is just e to the minus i q times a. And here you have the expected value of e to the minus uh, i q times b x which is nothing but uh, the generating function of x uh, computed uh, in uh, uh, b times q. Okay, so, the, so this tells us that uh, the generating function uh, of an affine transformation can be of, an, of a variable that is an affine transform of another variable can be generated quite easily. And, uh, in, uh, in, and and for the um, for the uh, cumulant generating function, this uh, transformation is even simpler because uh, if uh, uh, this is e to the minus i q a times phi of b q, then uh, for the uh, cumulant generating function of the affine transform variable is just minus i q a plus the psi of b times q. Okay, so, um, so the uh, further property uh, that uh, is important for a characteristic function we will use uh, quite a lot is what happens uh, if you have a sum. So if uh, x1 and uh, x2 are uh, two independent uh, random variables with distribution uh, p1 and p2, then uh, you can ask uh, what is the distribution of, uh, actually let us call this uh, uh, s2, which is x1 plus x2. And uh, so the, the characteristic function of the random variable s2 is expected value of e to the minus i q times s2, which is x1 plus x2. Uh, and this, uh, because x1 and x2 are independent, uh, this is just uh, uh, the product of the two uh, characteristic functions. Okay, and uh, this is just uh, phi one of Q times uh, phi two of Q, where these are just uh, the characteristic function of the random variables X1 and X2. So for the uh, cumulant generating function, so the cumulant generating function of the sum is just uh, the sum of the cumulant generating functions. So the cumulant generating function transform under the sum, just uh, like uh, the variables themselves. And uh, this extends uh, if I have, of course, uh, uh, that Sn uh, is equal to um, uh, the, num the sum of uh, uh, n random variables. Then uh, the generating function of Sn is the product, uh, and these are all uh, uh, xi are independent. Then this is just the, the product of the uh, generating functions of uh, the individual variables, and uh, likewise, the cumulant generating function is uh, the sum uh, of the individual uh, cumulant generating functions. And, uh, and on top of this, if the random variables are also identically distributed, then uh, all the phi i are equal, then uh, this is uh, phi of q to the end, but phi of q is the uh, characteristic function of one of the variables. And this is just uh, for the cumulant generating function, then uh, the cumulant generating function of n uh, iid random variable is just n times 
the uh, cumulant generating function of one of the variables. Okay, so um, this is, uh, uh, so we need one last uh, uh, property of uh, cumulant uh, of, of Cartesi function, which is uh, uh, Levy continuity. Theorem. Okay, so uh, so Levy continuity theorem tells us that uh, uh, if you have a sequence uh, of random variables, and uh, uh, so the uh, this sequence converges in distribution to uh, a random variable x, if and only if the um, generating functions uh, uh, generating function of the uh, random variable xn converge to a function phi of q pointwise and uh, um, with uh, um, phi of zero, that is continuous uh, at q equal to zero. Um, and um, and uh, so and and uh, so if uh, the generating function converge to uh, a function uh, phi of q which is continuous at q equal to zero, then uh, uh, this uh, uh, phi of q is the generating function is the characteristic function of the random variable x. Okay. So in other words. Uh, uh, in order to establish convergence in distribution of random variables, we only need to consider uh, the convergence uh, of the um, uh, generating functions, okay, o of the characteristic function, or equivalently of the cumulant uh, um, uh, characteristic functions. Okay, so let me uh, go back to our original problem here. And, um, uh, and let us uh, uh, recast this problem in, uh, um, in uh, an appropriate form. So essentially what we want to do uh, is to uh, study the random variable y n, which is uh, um, essentially s n minus a n divided by b n. And what we want to do is to compute uh, the uh, generating function, the characteristic function of this random variable y n, which we define as phi n of q, and uh, this is e to the minus i q y n. So we, if we can find a n and b n such that uh, the limit of the characteristic functions of uh, y n uh, is uh, correspond to the characteristic function of a non-degenerate distribution, then uh, uh, we can uh, establish convergence in distribution for the rescaled uh, and centered uh, sum for the random variable y. Okay, so when is it, uh, uh, so if P is uh, the generator, then uh, as you said, we expect uh, 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 distribution to be concentrated on just one value. And then uh, uh, in this case, you uh, would have uh, a distribution phi of Q, which is just E to the minus I Q times some Y zero. Well, Y is, is, a, is a number. So uh, what we want uh, is uh, a, a limit uh, that does not correspond to this form, okay? That is not the general. 
okay so okay so then uh, uh, we can uh, start from uh, this expression here and uh, use uh, our uh, properties so first of all because of uh, uh, yeah, the behavior under a fine transformation this is e to the minus i q a n over uh, b n with a plus sign because there's a minus sign there times uh, the expected value of e to the minus i q over b n times x1 plus plus x n now x1 plus x n are all i id random variables so that this is uh, uh, essentially e to the i q a n over b n times uh, the generating function of the original random variable x computed in q divided by b n raised to the power n. Okay, and here I use just the fact that uh, uh, these uh, random variables here are i i d. Okay, and so you can factorize the expected value. And, Okay, so very good. Uh, so now for the, uh, so what we want uh, is essentially that uh, as n goes to infinity, we want uh, that uh, this converges to a, a function that should not be uh, degenerate, should not be uh, like, uh, um, like this one. Okay, uh, so this is, uh, this is our problem. So this problem is even uh, simpler if uh, we uh, write it in terms of, uh, um, of uh, the function Psi. So what we want is uh, to find a n and b n such that the function psi n of q, which is the logarithm of the characteristic function, which is given by i q a n over b n plus n times uh, the cumulant generating function computed in q divided by b n. Uh, converges to some uh, psi star of Q as n goes to infinity. Okay, so, so this is our uh, main equation. Okay, that uh, will be the basis uh, of uh, the analysis. And uh, uh, so the main observation here to study this limit uh, is that when uh, uh, n goes to infinity, then also bn goes to infinity. And why is this so? Because, well, bn is the size of the fluctuations of a sum of n terms. And more te the more terms I am summing, the bigger uh, will this fluctuation be. So if uh, Bn uh, goes to infinity, then uh, uh, you can see that uh, the, uh, this limit is probing the behavior of the function Psi for very small values of Q, okay? And so what we need uh, is the low Q expansion or low Q leading behavior uh, of the function C. And this is uh, what we discussed with the uh, power expansion. So let's start by um, discussing the simplest uh, case. And the simplest case is uh, 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 that uh, we know that if uh, the expected value of X is finite, and uh, the variance of x is also finite, uh, then uh, we know that psi 
of k as an expansion, uh, which is uh, equal to minus i k times mu minus one half sigma squared times k squared plus higher order terms. And these higher order terms uh, actually are uh, can be written as uh, things which are of the order of k to the two plus m for some uh, m which is positive, okay? So we are only keeping track of these higher order terms uh, in order to uh, study the limit. Okay, then uh, uh, if I take uh, this uh, asymptotic behavior and plug it into our main equation, so what you find is it's psi n of q uh, will be equal to uh, uh, minus i q a n over b n. And then you have another term uh, which is proportional to i q that comes from when I substitute this here. And uh, this will be, uh, um, sorry, this is with a plus minus i q times n uh, divided by b n. Uh, this is just from the linear term in the expansion, minus uh, sigma squared over two times n times uh, q over b n squared, plus objects which are of order, uh, uh, Q over B N to the two plus M times N, okay? Because uh, because of this N here, okay? So now uh, you see that if we take uh, uh, A N is equal to um, mu times N, then uh, uh, sorry, I forgot a, fact, a factor mu. Then uh, essentially this uh, term here and this term here cancel, okay? And uh, if I also take uh, um, B n, which is equal to uh, sigma times square root n, then uh, uh, this term here becomes uh, just uh, equal to minus one half q squared. And uh, what about uh, this term? Well, this term becomes n times, uh, uh, it will be of the order of uh, uh, n times uh, uh, square root divided by uh, square root n to the two plus m. So it will be of order n to the minus m over two. So as n goes to infinity, all these, uh, all these terms, uh, all terms uh, uh, which have higher powers of k will just uh, uh, disappear. And, uh, and what, we were, what we can uh, conclude from this is that uh, the limit Uh, the limit, uh, so uh, the limit as n goes to infinity of psi n of q would be equal just uh, to the quadratic term, one half q squared, okay? So this uh, is the limit behavior of the uh, cumulant uh, generating function. And uh, this corresponds uh, to the uh, central limit theorem. So, uh, because this is the cumulant generating function that corresponds to uh, the Gaussian distribution, because uh, um, uh, so the the if you if you take uh, so this means that. Uh, uh, the phi star of Q will be equal to e to the minus one half Q squared. And uh, um, 
the probability distribution that corresponds to this is one over square root two pi e to the minus x squared over two, okay, which is the Gaussian. So this uh, result is called uh, the central uh, limit uh, theorem. And um, <clears throat> it tells you that uh, as soon as uh, uh, the variance uh, of uh, the variables that you are summing is finite, then uh, if they are independent and you sum many of these uh, random variables, then uh, the, the, if you take the sum, um, you uh, subtract the n times uh, the expected value and you divide by square root n times uh, the standard deviation, then uh, this converges to a random variable which is uh, essentially a Gaussian random variable. Okay, so uh, now the uh, central limit theorem actually has a broader uh, validity. So it actually uh, applies also when variables are not uh, um, identically distributed under uh, some conditions. It also applies uh, uh, when the random variables are not independent, but they have a weak dependence. We are not going to discuss uh, all these uh, details, but essentially uh, <clears throat> the, the uh, so this is uh, the, the, the main uh, idea. So one important thing uh, that we are going to discuss that is you see that the distribution of uh, uh, the random variable y in the limit is uh, always the same is the Gaussian uh, no matter uh, what is the initial distribution p of uh, the random variable so this is a sign of uh, what we will call like universality in the sense that the limit uh, distribution is universal. It applies uh, whatever is the initial distribution as long as the variance is, uh, is finite. Okay, let us now discuss uh, the uh, second case, uh, which is uh, the, uh, the other case. So what happens uh, when uh, uh, the Variance is infinite. Okay, so uh, so if the variance now is infinite, then uh, um, this means uh, that uh, the we cannot expand the characteristic function up to order q squared because the coefficient of the second order uh, is equal to infinity. Okay, so the variance I remind you is a coefficient of the second order expansion of the um, uh, cumulant uh, generating function. So uh, <coughs> then uh, um, if the variance is infinite, then uh, we cannot uh, use the expansion up to the second order. And this is actually because uh, uh, if the variance diverges, uh, so the variance is equal to the integral in dx of p of x, x minus nu squared uh, from minus infinity to infinity. So the only way in which this integral can diverge uh, is uh, if uh, the, the integrand, what is here, uh, vanishes uh, as x goes to infinity or minus infinity is lower than one over x, okay? So this means that uh, the, the variance uh, is infinite, um, implies that uh, p of x uh, 
should have a behavior for large X, uh, which is uh, as a power law with alpha, which is between one and two. It should be uh, larger than one because we want uh, the expected value to be finite, but uh, it should be less than two because uh, uh, we want the, the variance to be infinite. Okay, so uh, now what is the uh, what is the uh, characteristic? What are the properties of the characteristic function that um, um, correspond uh, to this uh, uh, behavior? In particular, what is the property of uh, the low leading behavior of uh, uh, psi of k for small k? Well, uh, because the uh, expected value is finite, well, the first term will be minus i mu times k. But then uh, uh, the, the next term, uh, um, for the next term, we have to uh, figure out what, what would be the leading term. So in order to do this, uh, so let's, think about uh, uh, what can be uh, this uh, uh, object. So for small k, this is uh, essentially equal to psi of k minus one plus i mu k, which is equal to the integral dx of p of x e to the minus i k x minus one plus i k x. Now we can argue, we can discuss this uh, um, um, leading behavior. Uh, so this, uh, what, what should be the leading uh, singular behavior of this function by using uh, uh, dimensional analysis. Okay, so uh, dimensional analysis means that uh, we imagine that x uh, as uh, some dimension that we call x. And then uh, uh, because uh, e to the uh, i k x must be a dimensional, must have the dimension of a number, then k times x must also be i dimensional. Then uh, the dimension of, uh, this means that the dimension of uh, k uh, should be equal to the dimension of x to the minus one, okay? So then uh, uh, you can see that uh, um, uh, say for uh, large X, uh, because uh, uh, P of X, uh, so all this, all this part in, the, in, 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 in this um, parenthesis uh, is I dimensional. So the dimension of uh, this term will be equal to the dimension of dx times p, p of x. But uh, uh, the, the dimension of, uh, uh, the dimension of uh, uh, px uh, times dx uh, is essentially uh, uh, the dimension of x uh, to the minus alpha because, uh, uh, because of this uh, leading behavior. And then uh, this means uh, that uh, the dimension of this integral will be uh, of uh, the dimension of k to the power alpha. So then dimensional analysis implies that uh, the leading behavior of this should be a constant times k to the alpha, okay? Plus higher order terms, okay? So um, now you can, uh, uh, study this uh, uh, leading behavior in more details, uh, but uh, essentially the, uh, the um, so the main idea is that uh, the small k behavior, because k is as the dimension of x to the minus one is, is related to the large x behavior of the function p of x. So the small k behavior of uh, the function of C is related to the large K behavior of function C of X. So the singularity at the origin 
of the function uh, psi, uh, which is this, should match the singularity at infinity of the function p of x. Okay. Now, if uh, uh, psi is uh, this uh, singular behavior, and if we substitute in this uh, equation, then uh, uh, we find uh, that uh, psi n of q should be equal to i q a n over b n minus n times, uh, um, so plus n times minus uh, minus i nu q divided by b n uh, plus, oh, sorry, uh, this should be a minus also because uh, the real value of uh, the generating function is always negative. So here you have minus c times uh, um, q to the alpha divided by b n to the alpha plus higher order terms. Okay, so now again you see that uh, if you if you choose uh, um, um, if you choose uh, a n uh, which is equal to um, So if you take a n, which is equal to n times mu, then uh, this term and this term uh, cancel because they, they are exactly the same. And, uh, and then uh, if you take uh, um, b n, which is equal to c n to the one over alpha, then uh, uh, the leading term here uh, becomes uh, uh, minus uh, q to the power alpha plus higher order terms. And these either higher order terms, uh, as before, they will uh, be um, they will go to zero as n goes to infinity. Uh, because if they are higher order with respect to Q, then uh, they will have uh, uh, a negative power uh, of N. They will correspond to a negative power of N. So then uh, uh, in this case, uh, we have that uh, the uh, Psi star of Q is equal to minus the absolute value of Q to the power alpha. So, um, Indeed, uh, I have been uh, cheating a little bit because uh, um, uh, this is what you obtain if you have a symmetric uh, distribution or, or a distribution that goes to zero in a, a symmetric manner when n goes to infinity or when n goes to minus infinity. But say if you define uh, the the um, weight of the tails of the distribution as the limit uh, as n goes to plus minus infinity of the absolute value of x to the alpha plus one times p of x. And, uh, and if you define the beta as uh, c plus minus c minus divided by c plus plus c minus, and you do the, the analysis of the integral uh, that I discussed before in some more detail, then uh, you find that uh, the coefficient uh, in front of uh, uh, the term q to the alpha actually depends uh, on uh, um, the sign of q. So that for positive q and for negative q, it is, uh, uh, a different uh, sign. So in, in, in specifically it is of the form i beta times uh, uh, the sine of q, which is q divided by the absolute value of q time the tangent of pi over two times alpha. 
sorry. Uh, times alpha. Okay. So you find this uh, expression. So this expression is called uh, uh, Levy distribution. So this is uh, the cumulant generating function that corresponds to Levy distribution. There is not uh, uh, an explicit form of um, the probability distribution P star uh, for a uh, Levy distribution, but essentially you, you can compute the <clears throat> Fourier transform or the back Fourier transform starting from uh, this expression. So the um, so this uh, uh, so the Levy distribution depends on two parameters, uh, alpha and beta. So alpha uh, is called uh, uh, alpha is called the characteristic uh, index. And beta is called the asymmetry parameter. Okay, so uh, now the final case that we have to discuss uh, is what happens when uh, uh, the expected value of x is also infinite and also uh, the variance uh, uh, the variance of x is also infinite. But this case is essentially equal to the previous one, with the only exception that now, uh, when you consider the um, uh, singular behavior of the function psi of k, then uh, the singular behavior of psi of k, so the leading order is just uh, the term c times k to the alpha. And also the leading, the linear terms are uh, a, a correction, a subleading correction to this, uh, so to this uh, behavior. So this means that uh, uh, in this case, uh, we can uh, take uh, uh, a n, uh, we can take a n equal to zero. And uh, again, we can take uh, Bn, uh, which is uh, C times N uh, to the one over alpha. And uh, the C star that we obtain is uh, exactly equal uh, to uh, this formula here. And um, so this is true for all values of uh, uh, alpha, but uh, there is a special case which is uh, alpha equal to one and alpha equal to one uh, corresponds to um, so the case alpha equal one uh, the characteristic function instead uh, as a different uh, behavior of course is proportional to the absolute value of q but then uh, the part that depends on the uh, on the sign of Q, there is an imaginary part that uh, has the form uh, as this uh, strange form. So beta is again the same asymmetry parameter. But then there is also a, a logarithmic dependence on the absolute value of Q. So this is uh, the special case uh, uh, when alpha is equal to one that has to be um, uh, that um, has to be dealt with uh, separately. So uh, in particular, when beta is equal to zero, one has the Cauchy distribution. So this is uh, psi star of Q, which is equal to minus absolute value of Q. 
And in this case, you can do the uh, back Fourier transform and find that uh, the P star of X is equal to one over pi, one over one plus X squared. So you see that indeed uh, the behavior of uh, the uh, distribution uh, is of order, it goes as X to the minus two, which is uh, alpha minus one, alpha plus one. Okay, so um, very good. So, uh, so there is a, a very curious uh, um, um, fact uh, when alpha is less than one that uh, maybe you have noticed that the sum, which is the sum of n terms. Um, goes as n uh, to the one over alpha, but because alpha is less than one, this grows uh, faster than n. So essentially, uh, if you take uh, s n and divided by n, uh, this goes to infinity as n goes to infinity. Okay, so um, so you understand uh, um, here why the law of large number does not hold, not only because the expected value uh, diverges, but also because uh, the the sum grows faster than n. The sum sum of n IID random variables grows faster than n. Okay, now how can uh, the sum of n terms, uh, each of which uh, is, uh, uh, say, is a random variable, does not know anything about n, how can this sum uh, of n terms be larger than n? So this is uh, very strange. And uh, so the reason why uh, this happens uh, is because uh, if you take the largest, uh, uh, the max, of the xi, this itself uh, under this condition goes as n to the one over alpha. So in order to show this, uh, uh, let me um, let me uh, discuss uh, uh, what is known as the uh, Glivenko Cantelli theorem. So the Grivenko Cantelli theorem states uh, the following. So that uh, if you have uh, a, a sequence of uh, uh, IID random variables uh, and uh, which have a cumulative distribution f of x, uh, sorry, uh, with the other sign, So if the cumulative distribution is uh, f of x, and then uh, if you uh, compute the empirical distribution, the empirical distribution is just uh, the fraction of points uh, xi that are less or equal to x. So then what the, uh, Grivenko Cantelli theorem tells you is that this converges almost surely as uh, n goes to infinity uh, to the function f of x uh, in uh, n infinity norm. So this means that, uh, uh, say, f of n of x uh, minus f of x uh, absolute value, and then you take the soup over all x. So this uh, converges almost surely to zero as n goes to infinity. Okay, so um, now uh, <clears throat> this 
this is interesting because uh, uh, it tells you that, uh, so there is a very simple uh, way in which you can estimate, uh, it's a very simple way in which you can estimate the distribution, the cumulative distribution from a sample. Uh, and the idea is the following. So you, uh, so first you sort uh, the variables uh, uh, in ascending order. Okay, so this means that uh, you define, you, you change your index uh, into index uh, x uh, in the brackets, uh, x1, x2, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, in such a way that uh, the xi are in ascending order. So, and then uh, um, it is clear that uh, then f uh, n. Uh, of x uh, k uh, must be equal to k divided by n. Okay, because uh, when uh, when uh, if you compute this, uh, so there are k um, variable out of the n variables that are uh, less than uh, x k. Then the k is largest. Uh, 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 sorry, the k is the k is smallest. Okay, then uh, um, um, then essentially, so the uh, <coughs> the the argument is that uh, uh, if you um, apply this, uh, so now imagine that uh, you have. Uh, a distribution uh, p of x that uh, uh, goes down as uh, x uh, to the minus alpha minus one on uh, uh, the negative side, then uh, uh, the, the smallest variable, uh, so the smallest variable here, that you expect in a sample should be uh, such that uh, f uh, n uh, of uh, x1 should be uh, equal to k over n. But Grianko uh, can tell it tells you that this is also a very good approximation, gives you a very good approximation of, uh, of the cumulative distribution, uh, which uh, uh, in this case, uh, which in this case uh, is the integral in dx uh, from minus infinity to, uh, to x1 of, uh, uh, of the p of x. And the p of x in this case is uh, well approximated by x to the minus alpha minus one. So if you do this integral uh, and if you do this integral in general, so the, the result that you get is that, uh, say for small k, is that uh, uh, this k over n is of the order of uh, absolute value of xk to uh, the power uh, minus alpha. So, and you can revert this relation and find that uh, the absolute value of x of x k of the k smallest uh, of this random variable uh, should be of order of n divided by k to the one over alpha. So you see precisely that uh, the the, the k largest variable, if k is finite, then. Uh, 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 the k largest variable will itself be of order n to the one, uh, one over alpha. Indeed, uh, in this case, uh, when you have uh, uh, alpha less or equal to one, um, the sum, if you take uh, the, the sum uh, and divide it uh, by the, the mean, and divided in, in this case, well, in this case, I'm considering the, the left tail. So 
So the minimum of the xi in absolute value. So this converges, this is of order one. If this is actually, it will be a random variable, which is uh, of, the, of order one. So one single variable is accounting uh, for a, a finite fraction of the whole sum, even when n goes to infinity. So this is a very special uh, uh, situation that uh, only occurs uh, um, for uh, um, uh, random variables uh, which have uh, uh, a distribution that goes as uh, um, very slowly to zero as x go to plus or minus infinity. 